Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We listen to the words of our gospel from Luke chapter 14, on which our sermon will be based. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this man your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the gospel of our Lord. Do we have any people watchers with us this morning? There was some people watching that was going on in in the lesson from Luke chapter 14. Those Jewish religious leaders, the Pharisees, they were watching Jesus. And Jesus was watching them. Now, if you're a people watcher, you know that there's only so much you can know based on seeing a person walk by you. And you might imagine things about where this person came from or what they're up to, but but you can't really know. We see Jesus, though, as he observes, as he people watches, you might say, he's able to draw deeper observations. He's able to take what he can see in outside actions and apply it to deep spiritual truths, to teach both them and us a lesson. So the question I I want you to be asking yourself throughout the next few minutes is this. If, If Jesus were watching me, if he were watching me, what would he see? This was the scene. One Sabbath when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. The Pharisees were doing their people watching on that Sabbath day dinner. They were watching one person in particular, they were watching Jesus. At this time, Jesus had made enemies with the Jewish religious leaders. He'd made enemies by criticizing them for their man made rules, he had made enemies by challenging them for their self righteous attitudes. And so when Jesus got the invitation, to come to a dinner party at the house of a prominent Pharisee, he knew what they were up to. He knew that they would be watching him closely, hoping that they might find, that they might see him saying or doing something that they could catch him in, maybe arrest him. But Jesus turned the tables around, didn't he? And he's the one who did the people watching that day. What did he see at the meal? Well, he saw, he saw these invited guests, probably other Pharisees or other religious leaders. He saw them jockeying for the best places at the table when it was time to sit down. And that might sound a little strange to you and to me. I don't know when the last time you went to a dinner party was, when, when you strategically placed yourself so that you would get the seat of honor at the table. I don't know about you, but when I go to someone's house, I might look for the, the spot closest to the food or someplace where I can reach my kids or maybe near people that I would enjoy having conversation with. But it sounds strange to see them jockeying for these places of, of honor at the table. 
You see, in, in Jewish culture, where you sat at the table was a big deal. The host generally would sit in the middle of the table, and to his left was the place of most honor, and to his right was the place of second most honor, and down you went. So the closer you were to the host, the more honored you were. Maybe the closest thing for us, the closest thing we could relate to, would be going to a reception at a wedding, after a wedding, and you know that, that it's the tables closest to the wedding party that, party that are, are for the family, that are for the closest friends. And so when Jesus saw these men grabbing the seats of honor at the dinner, he decided not to keep his opinion, his reaction to himself. Instead, he told the whole group, when someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this man your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. Was Jesus really concerned about bad table manners for these guests? Was his biggest concern the fact that, that these grown men were acting more like ill-mannered children than adults? We see that that wasn't the case. In fact, as he observed the actions of these grown adults, he was able to draw a deeper conclusion based on, on what he saw. And able to give a principle that it goes much further than just dinner etiquette when you're invited to a table. He summarized it with this, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And there you have it. Now when someone asks you later today, what was the sermon at your church about? You can tell them, Jesus teaches us not to exalt ourselves. But what exactly does that mean? I've never heard a parent chide their child, stop exalting yourself. Or, or to teachers, have you ever written that on a behavior form? She exalts herself too much in class. What does it mean to exalt oneself? What does that mean? Well, for these dinner guests that Jesus was speaking to, it meant grabbing the place of honor, trying to win honor for himself at the expense of the other guests. For the host of that meal, exalting himself meant inviting people that would admire him for his invitation, people that would honor him, and maybe, and probably, People that would invite him when it came time for them to hold the next social event. What does it mean to exalt oneself? It means putting your own self-interest first at the expense of someone else. Think of the teeter-totter. When you go up, someone else goes down. So what does that mean? For you. If Jesus would spend some time this week people watching and he was watching you, what would he see? Would he see a husband and a wife jockeying for position in their marriage, trying to get their own way? I read a book about marriage where the author pointed out a recent trend, at least in our culture, when it comes to marriage. Where marriage was once about us and the benefit of society, now marriage is more about, about me and my own personal self-fulfillment. Exalting yourself, you might say. How does that work out when, when a husband and a wife both operate trying to exalt himself or herself above the other? What do you see children who were not willing to honor and obey their parents. Or if they did, they did it 
grudgingly? Would you see employees who were very faithful when the supervisor was around, but not, not quite so much when he wasn't looking? What do you see people who, who were starving for attention, for acceptance by their peers, so much so that they were willing to compromise their values or to forget them altogether? What would Jesus see if, if he were people watching and he was watching you? When Jesus looks down at us, when he looks down at the people of this world, he sees what what we are so often blind to see ourselves. He sees people who are willing to put themselves first at the expense of others, imagining that, that if they can get some earthly reward or some earthly profit for themselves, that they will come out ahead. He sees us that, that even in our most charitable moments, when we say, finally, we're doing something good for someone else, and yet in the back of our mind, that thought pops up, but what's in it for me? How is this going to come back to benefit me? Or they better not forget. They better not forget that I've been doing this for them. And if they do, well, I'll stop doing it. While it's true that, that in this lifetime, our efforts of self-promotion usually fail to achieve the purpose that we're trying to get, it's even more devastating to our spiritual well-being when we place ourselves first at the expense of other people. And, and Jesus' principle stands firm. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he wasn't just giving a commentary to those dinner guests that if they took the place of honor, they might be humiliated when, when the host comes and sends them to the back. He was laying down a principle that applies to all of us. A principle that applies most of all when it comes to us and to our relationship with God. Everyone who exalts himself or herself before God, who comes to God imagining that, that you have some claim to His glory, some claim to a place with Him. Everyone will be humbled, that is, brought low by God Himself, separated from God through all eternity. If you live for a reward that is found only in this world, if you live only to try to get ahead and benefit yourself in this world, you forfeit. You forfeit the reward that Jesus has stored up for you in heaven. Now Jesus, he was not interested in just teaching these men better manners at the table. He was there with them that day because he wanted to teach them so much more. Do you think they got it? As they were watching him closely, did they see it? Did they know that they were honored, not because they got that, that seat close to the host, but because amongst them was Jesus of Nazareth, God himself? Do we see it? Do you see it this morning? Do you see how Jesus shows us the heart of God in the fact that he was willing to sit with sinners, willing to associate with sinners, not just at that dinner table that day, but to take on human flesh, willing to set aside any self-interest, to set aside the glory that was his, to humble himself, that he might be our Savior. And he did it for people who could not give him anything in return. We can't pay him back. He died for us. He rose for us. He has been exalted for us. And his principle stands true. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. 
It's remarkable that Jesus loved you and He loved me so much that He was willing to spare no expense but to give everything for our benefit, not for His. And it's true, whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And now through faith, connected to Jesus, we too shall be exalted. Connected to Him through baptism, our death is not the end, but merely the entrance into life. This is what Jesus teaches us at this table this morning. So what does He see then when he, when he looks at you? What does He see when He watches you? The truth is we need to hear this because outside these doors, in the world, we know that we are being judged by how people see us. We know that people are watching us each and every day. And it can be quite a burden to know that they're judging us based on our achievements at school or at work or on the athletic field or in the music hall, based on what we wear and how we look, based on what we own and what we drive and where we live. And it can be a crushing thing to live under this constant scrutiny and then to know ourselves we might wonder what business we have being here. And then we hear Jesus. We hear Him this morning. We know how He sees us as His own children covered by His perfect righteousness in possession of everything. A forgiveness of life, a claim to the kingdom of God, and this is a truth that, that expands throughout our whole lives as Christians. That if we have everything in Christ, then why would we ever have to worry about gaining glory in this world? If we have been given everything in Christ, then why would we spend our lives pursuing only our own self-interest, trying to get ahead or trying to gain a treasure that won't last we have a heavenly treasure stored up for us in Jesus that cannot be taken away. And in a sense, Jesus calls us, He calls us to do some people watching in our lives on earth. Not merely to admire the people that walk in front of us and to imagine something about them. He calls us to open our eyes and to see the needs of those whom He's placed in our lives. To be watching closely, to see where He has put us, that we might use what He has given us for their benefit with no thought about what it might cost to us. Whether that's in your marriage, or in your family, or at work, or here at church, or at the grocery store, wherever you may be, open your eyes, do some people watching. And know what Jesus promises is true. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. May God grant it, and may He preserve us in faith until that day. Amen.